So our next method, let's write the documentation first. So slash star star. This next method, um, in the context of our metal count class, this method sums the metals for the specified country index. So each country has its own row. We'll specify the index. Um, in a more general sense, we're performing an operation on all elements in the specified row. So we're going to have a parameter. And that parameter is going to be called country index. And it is the index of the country in the table whose metals to sum. And in this example, we're just calculating a sum. You could do whatever operation you want, right? You could do an average. You could find the max. You could find the min. You could find duplicates. All those array algorithms that we've done before, you could apply in, in this context as well. And this is going to, in this case, we're simply going to return the sum of metals for the specified country index. So what's our method header look like? It'll be public. It returns an integer value. And we'll call it sum metals for country. And it takes one parameter of type int called country index. We'll need a local variable to keep a track of the running total. Um, so I'll create a local variable of type int called sum, and I'll initialize it to 0. When all is said and done, I'll return sum. And then what we still need to do is work on what we do in between those two. When we printed the entire table, we had to iterate through every element in the two-dimensional array. So that necessitated the use of nested loops. We needed one loop to go through every row, and we needed another loop to go through every column. Um, here, it's a little bit more straightforward. The row isn't going to change. The row is passed as a parameter. So we know what row we want. We simply need a single for loop to go through every column and we'll look at elements in the specified row. So I'm going to create a for loop um, where we iterate through every column. So for int call equals 0, start at index 0. We go while column is less than the number of columns. And as we learned previously, the best way to get that is to get a reference to the array for the current row. So I'm going to use country index here, which is the row index. This expression right here that's highlighted returns a reference to an array of integers. It's returning a reference to a given row. And I want the length of that row because the length of the row is the number of columns. And then we'll increment column each time. We're doing sum because it's pretty straightforward. Again, you can replace this, this operation we're doing with any other operation. But we're simply going to increment sum by the value of the uh, in the counts two-dimensional array for the specified row index and then for the current column based on our loop variable. And that's it. That's what it takes to iterate through every element for a specified row. Now to iterate through every element for a specified column is very, very similar. Okay? Um, so while this method here calculates the sum of all the methods for a given country, we could also have a method that would calculate like how many silver medals has been awarded so far at the Olympics. Okay. So let's create a method to do that. So we'll create another Java doc comment. And this comment says sums the medals for the specified metal index. You know, like zero is gold, for example, one is silver, two is bronze. Um, 
But more generally, and in terms of applying this to other situations, the metal index is really the specified column. So we're going to have a parameter called metal index. And it's the index of the type of metal in the table to sum for all countries. And then it will return that sum, the sum of metals of the specified index for all countries. So the method header here will make it public so other classes can use it. It returns an int value. We'll call it sum metals for type. And it takes one parameter, which is the metal index. And this will be very, very similar to the method we just, we just wrote. Um, again, we don't need nested for loops because we don't need to iterate through every row and then for every row go through every column. Um, we're only going to look at one column and we already know its index. So we just need a single for loop to iterate through every row. Um, we're still going to create a local variable sum and initialize it to zero and we're still going to return sum at the end and then in the middle for our to iterate through every row for a given column, we just need one for loop. So for int row equals zero, we'll start at row zero, index zero. We need to go through every row, so we'll say row is less than this dot counts is a reference to our two-dimensional array. This dot counts dot length is the number of rows in our two-dimensional array. And we'll increment row each time. And then we'll simply increment sum by the value of um, in the 2D array for the row we're currently iterating through. So we'll use the loop variable row. Um, and the column never changes. It's always whatever the value of metal index is. And that's passed as a parameter. And that's the algorithm to iterate through every element in a given column. Just check yourself with these algorithms, because sometimes I think it's confusing when we say sum a given column. The thing that's not changing is actually the column index, and your loop is focused on the rows. And when we say sum everything in a given row, it's potentially confusing because the thing that's not changing is the row and your loop has to focus on iterating through every column. So just be careful thinking through those. Again, of course, sketching it out helps tremendously. Um, but with these three examples, you can pretty much do anything you need to do um, involving two-dimensional arrays.